We have a way of discussing the world, which you could call, a, we discuss it at various hierarchies or levels. Now, I don't mean to be very precise, uh, this as a level, as another level, and another level, but I will indicate by describing a set of ideas to you, just one after the other, what I mean by hierarchies of ideas. For example, at one end, we have the fundamental laws of physics. Then we invent other terms for concepts which are approximate, who have, we believe, the ultimate explanation in terms of the fundamental laws. For instance, heat. Heat is supposed to be the jiggling, and it's just a word for a, a hot thing, it's just a word for a mass of atoms which are jiggling. For that, fundamentally, we should think of the atoms jiggling. But for a while, if we're talking about heat, we sometimes forget about the atoms jiggling. Just like when we talk about the glacier, we don't always think of the hexagonal ice the snowflakes which originally fell. Another example of the same thing is a salt crystal. Looked at fundamentally, a lot of protons, neutrons, and electrons. But we have this concept, salt crystal, which carries a whole pattern already of fundamental interactions, or idea like pressure. Now, if we go higher up from this, in another level, we have properties of substances like refractive index, how light is bent when it goes through something, or surface tension, the fact that the water tends to pull itself together, is described by a number. I remind you that we have to go through several laws down to find out that it's the pull of the atoms and so on. But we still say surface tension, and don't worry when we're discussing surface tension of the inner workings always. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Go on, up in the hierarchy. With the water, we have the waves, and we have a thing like a storm. We have a word for storm, which represents an enormous mass of phenomena. Or sunspot, or star, which is an accumulation of things. And it's not worthwhile always to think of it way back. In fact, we can't, because the higher up we go, the, we have too many steps in between, each one of which is a little weak, and we haven't thought them all through yet. And we go up in this hierarchy of complexity, we get to things like frog, or nerve impulse, which you see is an enormously complicated thing in the physical world, involving an organization of matter in a very elaborate complexity. And then we go on, we come to things, words, and concepts like man and history or political expediency and so forth, <laughs> which is a series of concepts that we use to understand things at an ever higher level. And going on, we come to things like evil and beauty and hope. Now, which end is nearer to the ultimate creator or the ultimate? or if I make a religious metaphor, which end is nearer to God? Beauty and hope or the fundamental laws? I think that uh, the right way, of course, is to say that the whole structural interconnections of the thing uh, is the thing that we have to look at, and that the sequence of hierarchy, that all the sciences and all the efforts, not just the sciences, but all the efforts of intellectual time, are to see the connections of the hierarchies is to connect beauty to history, is to connect history to man's psychology, the man's psychology to the working of the brain, the brain to the neural impulse, the neural impulse to the chemistry, and so forth, up and down, both ways. And today we cannot, and there's no use making believe we can, draw carefully a line all the way from one end of this thing to the other. In fact, we've just begun to see that there is this relative hierarchy. And so I don't think either end is nearer to God's. And it's to stand at either end and to walk out off the end of the pier only, hoping out in that direction is the complete understanding, is a mistake. And to stand with evil and beauty and hope, or to stand with the fundamental laws, hoping that way to get a deep understanding of the whole world with that aspect alone is a mistake. And it is not sensible either for the ones who specialize at one end and the ones who specialize at the other end to have such uh, disregard for each other. They don't, actually, but the people say they do. So. <laughs> but that actually the great mass of workers in between, connecting one step to another, are improving all the time our understanding of the world, both from working at the end and working in the middle. And uh, in that way, we are gradually understanding this connection, this tremendous world of interconnecting hierarchies. Thank you.